tell you a little secret. You know what really gets me going in the morning? Singing. In the shower. Here, I even made you a sample. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. Rubber ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. Do 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 do. Rubber ducky, joy of joys. When I squeeze you, you make noise. Rubber ducky, you're my very best friend in school. Yes, everybody wants to be famous. Some like acting, some like dancing, some like singing. But how is it that some of us actually get to pursue such a career? I know I won't cut it as a singer, but is that simply because I'm not talented enough? Or is it because I didn't hone those skills from a young age? Well, it's probably too late for me. I mean, seriously, I don't think there is a market for a 30-something matcha trying to be the next Eddie Vedder, right? Right? Maybe? Well, I'm a writer. I'm also Indian, which by default means that I actually should have been a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. But as my mother has always said, Ah yeah, that Uma fella never listened, wants to do his own thing. Now I'm sure no Indian Tangachi is going to marry him. Ah, yeah. Thanks mom, but I doubt Aishwarya Rai would have picked up my calls anyway. Well, I could have been a doctor, or even an engineer if I wanted to. I am smart enough, I mean that's pretty clear. But I wanted to follow my passion. And as usual... Passion? Very good. Money? How? You know the story. You've heard it all before. Get a traditional job. Think about the security it offers. Don't be silly. You can pursue that passion as a hobby. But that is no longer the case. There is a new economic buzzword. Creative industry. And it's nothing to scoff at. Did you know that in the UK alone, the creative industry contributes about 6% of the GDP? That's a lot of jobs. Those were the guys that made the Olympics opening ceremony possible. The creative industry covers everything from advertising to architecture, from fashion to film. It is also a major cultural export. Think about some of your favourite television programmes. Glee, Modern Family, Big Bang Theory. Think about some of your favourite films. Yeah, we consume a lot of content from overseas. The thing is, we should be able to create our own world-class content. We shouldn't have to go south of the border to catch some world-class concerts. Creativity is all about talent, but in order to create an industry, we need to nurture our own talents. There has to be proper training, resources and infrastructure so that the best talents can flourish. But how does one go about building the right structures to support the growth in creativity? I speak to Suhaili Michelin, a dancer and choreographer, to find out how she made it to where she is today. Um, basically, my talent was discovered by my mom uh, when I was a baby. Uh, I used to uh, bounce everywhere, drop off the bed, hit my head a few times. So, and that time mum was, you know, a, a performer and a teacher in FAB and PJ. And so she was determined to start her own school. And obviously I was one of her first students. Um, and then... Um, after Form 5, I did my Year 12 in Australia, which is at the Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School, for, um, which took me a year. And from that year onwards, I applied for the VCA School of Dance, um, doing a degree. And that took about three years. Um, my parents paid for it. Sue returned from Australia in 2007 and took part in ATV So You Think You Can Dance. She made it all the way to the final four. She was then invited back on the second season as a choreographer. Sue believes that her exposure on that show helped her gain notice. Sue represented Malaysia at the World Championships of Performing Arts in 2010. She won two titles. She now travels regularly and is currently in Australia working on a new dance production. But what role should the government play in supporting the arts? I speak to Bilkis Hijas, a producer who champions the local dance industry. Wherever you look in the world where there is a flourishing and interesting dance community, it's because government has chosen to fund it because they're interested in the art itself, not because they're interested in profits coming from that art. So 
If we really want that to happen for Malaysia, if we want to have a really, really flourishing industry here of performing arts, we've got to value the art itself and pay dancers. The government needs to provide funding, yes, funding, and long-term funding, not just seed funding, not catalyst funding, long-term funding, for projects and for salaries. She also shares some of the structural problems many in the performing arts industry face. Um, what would work most and what in other countries has been seen to work most for the performing arts is to have an arts council of people with interest and expertise in the arts who make decisions about giving out grants for projects and also for long-term companies um, to hire people, management and salaries. And that is what we really need. Most dancers and choreographers and dance practitioners are very, very entrepreneurial. They have to be. They have no choice. They have to make their own way in the world. Most of them are working, you know, two or three jobs. Um, some of those might be dance-related or not. They take opportunities whenever they arise. They are very flexible. What about the private sector? Are they a viable source of growth for the creative industries? There have been some notable developments. For example, Pinewood Studios, home of the Superman movies and James Bond, are opening a facility in Malaysia, offering stages, TV studios and post-production. Rhythm and Hughes have been here since 2009. As these companies grow their business, they will need to employ Malaysians, everything from makeup artists to dancers, cameramen, animators, composers. Now is the time to invest in these talents, to provide them with the right opportunities and the right training. These talents will, in turn, add to our local creative output, which will then open up the market well beyond Malaysia. In a world where everything is increasingly automated, the real competition will be in talent and creativity. Then, perhaps we will be able to start exporting our own content to the rest of the world. Yalah, okay lah. Ma'aisan can cari makan.